Yo, what's going on everyone? How you guys doing today? Welcome back to another Steam 2 video. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at a new build that I've been using this last couple of days. This build pretty much utilizes all the new Arrive mods to make it into a pretty fantastic build. That's not only good for something like GMs, but pretty much anything that you want to take it into is going to give you damage resistance. It's going to give you a bunch of ad clear. And this is just a fun build to use with a weapon that you don't really see too often. Now the main things that you're going to need for this build are going to be the Gifted Convection, the Exotic Chest Piece. And for the weapon, you're going to go with the Centrifuge, the Exotic Out Rifle. So as long as you have those two things, this build is going to work pretty well. And you're going to pretty much be able to get the most out of it. Now let's get into actually talking about the weapon since you already talked about the Centrifuge a bit. So let's start with that. So we're going to be starting off with our very first weapon and also the heart and soul of the build, the Centrifuge. And this is like the perfect weapon for all the new mods. Not only is it an auto rifle, but it's an arc auto rifle that also blinds, it auto reloads itself, and it has some really good synergy with being amplified. Now if you have the catalyst on this weapon, that's going to be amazing because it means this thing is always overcharged. It just never goes down unless you have to reload. Because the blind doesn't kick in till you're actually like fully charged. Uh, after that, whenever you kill an enemy, you're gonna blind everything around it. And with the mods, we're also gonna get those lightning strikes that are pretty much gonna kill whatever you killed. <laughs> the lightning strikes that you get when shooting this weapon with the new mods, it's crazy. You, you actually have a lot of ad clear with those lightning strikes. Plus, if something's not dead, they're gonna be blinded, so then you can shoot them with your auto rifle and then make the lightning strikes happen again with whatever didn't die with the first one. The only bad thing about this auto rifle is that it's mostly for ads. Uh, you're not really gonna do much against some of the bigger targets. Uh, you just don't. <laughs> you just don't do a lot of damage against them. But you do proc uh, the damage resistance on them. So if you shoot them with this auto rifle, it will give you that big damage resistance. So then you can switch over to your other weapons and finish the big enemies with those. But this is mostly is gonna be for ad clearing. But it's gonna be pretty good at that ad clearing though. It's going to be really amazing, and it's going to make a lot of explosions, or I guess a lot of lightning strikes with it. So, the centrifuge is going to be amazing, and it's going to be the weapon that we're going to be using most of the time. Now, for your kinetic weapon, this is where your special weapon is going to go. I would recommend either a special sidearm or a sniper. Both of those are anti-champion weapons, and they're also special weapons. So this is what you're going to use whenever you run into those big enemies that the auto rifle can't really deal with. That's when you switch over to your sidearm or your sniper to deal with them. And you pretty much just match them depending on the champions that you ran up against. If you ran into unstoppables, you might want to go with the sidearm. If you ran into uh, barriers, you might want to go with the sniper. It just kind of depends on what you run into in the GMs. Uh, in the gameplay in the background, I was using the supremacy, basically just with breaking shields. And I do not hold back on the supremacy. I'm sure you guys have seen in the background. Whenever I shoot a uh, anti-barrier, I shoot them for a long, long time. <laughs> I basically just full auto uh, with the supremacy. But both of them are going to be pretty great at dealing with those bigger enemies. Whether you go with a sniper or with a special sidearm. Now for the heavy weapon, I decided to go with the Crud Termination 4. And you can get one of these from the Lost Sectors in case you guys don't have them. And this one's pretty good. This is one of the best rockets in the game. And it's also arc, so it matches very well with my auto rifle. And this one's just going to be for dealing with champions. You want to melt them really quickly. Or for doing some boss damage. Or maybe even just clearing out an area. Uh, you have a lot of different uses that you can use the crit termination for. But yeah, whenever you want something just gone as fast as possible, that's when we fire our rockets. And that's mostly what it's for. Uh, we're not really breaking any shields or stunning any champions with our uh, rocket. It is really used to put out a lot of damage. And this thing knows how to put out damage. So hopefully you guys have a good one in your vault. If you don't, you could always just go to the Lost Sectors and farm one. But if you don't want to do that, there's also a couple of other arc rockets that you can get. Like the Hot Hit or the Blowout. All of those arc rockets are still going to work. Just I don't think that they're as good as the Crux Termination. Now for a super, we're going to be running the Gathering Storm. This thing does a ton of damage. And it's pretty much like the best uh, arc super. Now for the grenade and the melee, I was kind of a bit torn on this. But I decided to go with the arc bolt grenade, as was the disorienting blows. 
Now, the disorienting blows is going to blind something whenever you hit it. This is not really like a melee build, so we really need combination blows. So that's why I ended up going with disorienting blows. Now we went for the arc bolt because it's like the quickest targeting grenade. But if you don't really have to go with the arc bolt, if you don't like it, you can go with any grenade. Any grenade will work. Um, I just happen to like the arc bolt more. It gives you another way to blind some targets if they get too close. And also even stun their own stoppables. But this is definitely like a last resort type of way to stun their own stoppables. Because you gotta get really close to melee them. And they're probably gonna be damaging you quite a bit. Even with all the damage systems you have. I wouldn't really advise you to go around just meleeing all the unstoppables. Now for our aspects, we're going to have Ascension as well as Flow State. Now Ascension is going to give us an easy way to become uh, Amplified just by using our class ability. And we definitely want to be Amplified. A lot of our mods only work if we are Amplified. And with Ascension, it's just the easiest way to become Amplified and to stay Amplified. Now once we're actually amplified, we're going to have increased damage resistance and whenever we get some kills with our arc weapons, they're going to do lightning strikes. So it's going to be really good for both ad clearing and just surviving so you always want to be amplified. Flow state is going to keep us amplified and it's also going to make it so we always get our dodge back used ridiculously quick. We're never going to run out of amplified as long as we have flow state. We just get the dodge back really quickly so we can spam it. And we're also going to have ridiculous reload speed whenever we're amplified. So we're going to be able to reload all our weapons really quickly. It's not even use the arc weapons, use any weapons. Now moving on to the fragments, the first one we're going to have is going to be the Spark Shock. This pretty much just lets our grenades jolt targets. So whatever you hit is going to be jolted, meaning that you're going to be able to stun overloads with this. We actually have a lot of, a lot of ways just built in on stopping uh, overloads. And by jolting targets, you're also going to activate your exotic armor, getting some extra damage assistance. We want to jolt as many targets as we can, just so we can get that extra damage assistance from a chest piece. And there's another way of jolting targets. Next up, we're going to have the spark of amplitude. Whenever we're amplified and we kill multiple targets, we're going to make some orbs of power. Just so we can make some orbs, that's pretty much it. Uh, just a way to make some orbs for us and our teammates. Next, we have spark of resistance, which is going to give us some damage assistance whenever we're surrounded by combatants. And it gives us a pretty good uh, amount of damage resistance as well. It gives us 25% damage resistance used by being surrounded. And this is going to be really good for some of the higher end content like the GMs, just so you can take a bit more damage. And lastly, we're going to have the spark of recharge. Whenever we're critically wounded, our melee and our grenade energy are going to regenerate more quickly. And this is no joke. You get like 400% ability recharge energy when your shields are broken so you gotta be regening your grenade and your melee just crazy fast whenever you are low in health now for exotic it's gonna be the gift of conviction and this one's basically just to help us stay alive it essentially just gives us at a crazy amount of damage resistance every time we jolt something most of the time you're gonna keep this up with ascension you just kind of run into a right above a group of enemies Hit your ascension and you're probably gonna get like two to three stacks of the damage resistance it is very rare that you get four but it can happen and at four you get a crazy 50 percent damage reduction it is crazy the amount of damage reduction you can get with the gifted conviction even just that one stack it is still 25 percent so it is definitely worth it with this build you have so many different ways of getting damage resistance that you're pretty much never gonna take full damage from anything. That's just not something that's gonna happen. You have the Gifted Conviction, you have the mod that gives you damage resistance for being amplified, and you also have the mod that gives you damage resistance whenever you hit something with your auto rifle. So you have tons of ways of actually just getting some damage resistance. So you're gonna be pretty tanky. Even in stuff like GMs, you're gonna be able to tank a lot more damage than you would think. All right, so now we're gonna be taking a look at the armor and the exotic class items. Okay, so now we're going to be taking a look at the mods that we're running and also the artifact. So, we're starting off here with the mods. For the helmet, we're going to have an Arc Siphon, Radiant Light, and Heavy Ammo Finder. Heavy Ammo is just so we can shoot more rockets. This is whenever we cast our super, we give Armor Charge to our allies, and then Arc Siphon just so we can make some more orbs. Now for our gauntlets, we're going to have Firepower, 
fastball and momentum transfer so we can get back our melee faster and so we can make some orbs with our grenade as well. For our chest piece, this is just the resistances. This one's going to change depending on the activity you want to do. Even all the different GMs have like different threats. So you make sure that you check what it is before uh, choosing your resistances. Because they're basically going to change with the activity. With the boots, we're going to have Absolution, Orbs of Restoration, and Recuperation. Just so we can get back our abilities with orbs and also we can heal with orbs. And lastly for our class item we have proximity ward plus two utility kickstarts so we can spam our class ability even more. I really wish a lot more of these mods actually work with ascension but they don't so you know the what utility kickstart it is. Now for the artifact you want to have shield crush, shock and all this is the thing that makes it so you do those lightning strikes whenever you're amplified. Uh, then you want to have targeting auto loader so your auto rifle just auto reloads itself whenever you get some kills. And also sustain fire. This is what gives us that damage assistance with the auto rifle. You also want to have Galvanic Armor, which is going to give us damage assistance whenever we're amplified. There's another big one. These two right here are the two must-haves. You definitely want to have these two. Uh, then we have Radiant Orbs. And then the other must-have is going to be Anti-Barrier Sniper. Or Sidearm if you ended up going with Sidearm. Right now I was using the sniper, so that's why I only have the sniper one. But if you're gonna use the sidearm, make sure that you get unstoppable sidearm. Uh, some of the other things we have are creeping chill. Uh, we actually didn't use this at all. But if you have a sniper with a chill clip, this is really good. Too bad that there's like not that many. And we also have scavenger mods, but again, this one's not a big deal. Uh, we pretty much already talked about the major ones. And with that, that's really going to be... Oh, wait, wait. We did not talk about all of them. Overload our rifle. You want to take this into the GMs. This is pretty much a must-have. The overload our rifle. So you can actually stun those overloads with the other rifle. And now, that is pretty much everything with the build. Like always, I'm going to leave a dim link in the description below. In case you guys want to check out the build and use it yourself. It is really good in pretty much any activity. And it can definitely still put in the work in the GMs. The bad thing about doing GMs with this build is that the auto rifle will struggle. <laughs> definitely. If you're running into too many yellow bars, like sometimes the GM likes to throw at you. Because they're just so tanky when it comes to any primary weapons. But even if you are running into all those big enemies, that's why we have our sniper or sidearm. So we can deal with those. And once the ads show up again, then the auto rifle can really shine. But yeah, this is a very fun build that I've been using. Uh, hopefully you guys like it. It's uh, definitely different. Never expected myself to be using the centrifuge for anything now. <laughs> Nowadays. It, it's been a bit of a forgotten weapon. You don't really see it too often. But these mods basically were just perfect for it. And I'm pretty sure that Bungie made these mods with the centrifuge in mind. There's no way that they did not. But hopefully you guys enjoy it. Go give it a try. Uh, see how you like it. I would say that this build definitely shines whenever there's overload champions and you have a GM with overloads. Since you have just so many ways to actually stun those things that they're never going to get away from you. But if you have one with unstoppables and barriers and no overloads, then that's a GM that this build might struggle on. But anyways, let me know what you guys think about it. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed the video. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care everyone. Have a good day. Peace.